OCN, Word of God to the World. Welcome to OCN. Tonight's going to be amazing. And I'm very, very, very joyful to be here because it's one of the best teachings I have ever prepared for because I am a living testimony of these teachings today. I have named my teachings today the gift of giving. And it's a gift. But we're going to open this um, show tonight with a prayer. So if we can close our eyes and we thank you, Holy Spirit, that your presence is here. I give you full access to my mind, to my soul, to my vocal cords. And let it be you, Holy Spirit, speaking through my vocal cords. We rebuke anything. We cancel anything, any attacks of the enemy assigned to this hour today, Father God. And we just, instead, we replace it with the spirit of revelation and love and justice, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is one of the best teachings I've ever prepared for because I am a living testimony of the gift of tithing and giving. So I, as I was pre preparing for these teachings, I wanted to, um, to renew your mind based on the past teachings that I have done with, first of all, what is faith? Faith is confidence. What is repentance? Repentance is transform, transformation of our minds. So in order for us to receive the greatest gift that the Lord has given us, we have to repent, meaning transform our mind, ready to receive what he has given us already. And second, to have faith, to have the confidence, to have no doubt that he will give us all the desires of our heart. So I have prepared a couple of scriptures that actually, you know, uh, have helped me in my breakthrough financially in each and every area of my life when it comes to giving. So we know that giving is a gift and we all must receive it. So I want you to repeat after me and I want you to say, I receive the gift of given in the name of Jesus right now. You have to say it. This is so prophetic. Okay, so if we go to Proverbs 18, 16, and I'm reading from the NIV version, it says, a gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. So a gift opens a way. And this is what Jesus exactly did for us. He opened the way for us. So we go now to Proverbs 11:25. He says, a generous person will prosper, and whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. So then here it comes. John 3:16 is one of my favorite scriptures because God so loved the world that he gave, listen, gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish and have eternal life. So in order for you guys to find your, yeah, to receive actually your financial breakthrough, you have to receive Jesus in your life. How? It first with repentance. We have to repent on our sins. So what repentance of sins means that you actually are transforming your mind from not doing those things that you used to do before into now like receiving Jesus. And how do you receive Jesus? Having confidence, believing that he's real, that he came to this world, and he died for our sins. So it's just going to get better. So if you have a friend, you must call them so they can tune in and listen to this message. Because I'm not only talking about financial breakthrough. I'm talking about any kind of um, breakthroughs that you need in your life. And giving is not only about money. So I'm a cheerful giver. I love giving. Um, it's either we're talking about you giving time to the church, to a friend that needs your help, um, your time to somebody, a word, uh, whatever it is that, that it needs to be given. You know, we need to learn how to give, but you will not learn how to give unless you receive Jesus in your life and this is the night and this is the night that it's everything is going to change in your life because this message is powerful and it comes from Jesus. So now we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 9 7 and it says and we're reading from the NIV. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not relentlessly or under compulsion but for what loves where God loves a, a cheerful giver. Compulsion 
So we have to give based on happiness, whether it's money, whether it's time, whether it's uh, uh, whatever award that you need to give to somebody. So I went on and I actually studied the definition of compulsion. So compulsion is the action of being forced to do something as an obligation or pressure. So this is what I want you to do today. I want you to transform and you re renew your mind as I did five years ago. You know, I, I have a very strong and powerful testimony. And that's why I can stay quiet. That's why I speak the word of God everywhere I go. That's why I carry his presence. But th how did I get my breakthrough? I'm going to tell you what it is. We have to read the Bible. We, as a Christians, sisters, brothers, is the time of the awakening. You have to wake up. You have to rise up. And you have to open the Bible. And you are going to get set free. Set free of poverty, sickness, illness, depression, whatever it is that you're going through. Why? Because that the Bible is the truth and the truth will set us free. So what I did, I actually opened the Bible. It's not how much I read, it's how much I meditate on it. I went chapter by chapter and I started applying everything that the Bible was saying into my personal life. So going back into my testimony, I come from a background of very poor family. My, my family members are very poor. So I came to this country. I went through my whole divorce. I didn't have nothing to eat. Then Jesus found me. One of my favorite people, I'm going to call him my favorite people. I told him, well, when I wasn't a Christian, he said, no, let me, let me, ref let me rephrase that for you. He said, you were a Christian. You just didn't know it. And I just love that because it's true. Because I always was a daughter of the, the, the Father in heaven. I just didn't know it until I opened the Bible, until I decided to press for it in the midst of my circumstances. When I said, you know what, I'm going to believe the Bible. I, my, I'm, I'm going through a divorce. I don't have nothing to eat. I don't have money for my rent. Um, I got fired from my job. And all that I'm saying right now is true. This all happened to me, but I said, I'm going to say what the Bible said. I'm going to give without looking at my bank account. There's times I only have $20 cash in my wallet, and I went to church, and I gave it all away, but I didn't trust in my circumstances. I said, you know what, I'm going to trust in you, Lord. And one of the next scriptures that I, I love, I love on the giving part of, is Malachi 3.10. He says, bring the whole tide into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. That's the Lord speaking. That's our Father in heaven. Come on. Sisters, brothers, I know you're listening to this and you have to wake up. So he's asking us to bring his, that or tidings and the offerings into his house that they might be food for the pastors, for the leaders, for the missionaries that go out to the nations to preach the word. He said, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I would not throw and open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessings that there will be more room, that will be not room enough to store it. So he's saying, and this is what I'm going through right now. So going back into having $20. So I said, I'm testing you, Lord, because I don't know what's going to happen. And I'm testing you, Father God, because I have to pay my bills. Then I got a job. Then I got a raise. And then I'm like, okay, I'm making $600, but I'm paying this much money on rent, on bills, on this. And I still have to make money to tie it on this six, $600. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to test you because I believe if we're calling believers, we call them believers of God, of Christianity. We have to believe his word. And his word is saying, test me on this. So someone came the other day when I was giving my testimony in church and said, Sister, um, where do I tie from? My growth or my net? I said, how do you want to get blessed? Do you want to get blessed from your growth or your net? You know, so right there and there, it tells me, you know, don't plan. You know, now I'm a business owner and very successful being a business owner for the last year and a half because the, the blessings of God, the Malachi 310 are in my business. I don't know how I pay my, my, my bills. I have a, a huge payroll. I live by faith. I don't try to pay my bills and whatever is left over. 
I'm going to give to God. No. Whatever it comes inside my house, 10% and more is given to my Father in heaven. I am just in the store of his money. So today, he's calling us. He's calling us to test, to test them. And you will see God, there is an acceleration in the spirit right now for his people. And God is trying to position you. Yes, you, you that you're watching in a position of power. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you so you can be a blessing, so you can be a, a prayer answer. There's people, there's Christians praying in other nations there were countries like my country. I'm full born in Honduras, Central America, and I have people there that are starving. I have Christian friends that are dying because they don't have um, money for medicine, that they don't have food. So today, you know, I'm marking a difference. And every time something gets said, I got to make sure that it said it's from God. He's answering your prayers. But I'm always remembering that He is the one. He's the one that is giving me the overflow. That is no, I, I don't have room for my business anymore. It's just continue growing and growing. So today, He wants to position you in the same thing. So stop reasoning the way He says, stop thinking how you're gonna how you're gonna pay for this bill if you if you tie it in this in this amount of money and how are you gonna do that give freedom to Holy Spirit give freedom to God because he really wants to bless you he, we're living at times when money is necessary money has opened doesn't make me happy because even before always making money and had business and I was never happy but when you're under the coverings of God it says in the Bible in the book of Proverbs the money while you're serving God and you're in the coverings of God will never bring sorrow now we have many people that are rich and we have people Hollywood people that they're killing themselves they're overdosing on, on drugs and alcohol killing killing themselves so suicidal because they have money and they're not in the coverings of God. So there is a mystery when we give to the poor, to the needy. And I'm going to touch this with another verse here in the Bible. But it's important that you wake up today and you said, I'm going to test. I'm not a pastor. I'm not asking you to give because I want to benefit from it. I don't need anything from anybody. All I need is the open the doors the heavens of uh, of uh, the doors of heaven to be open so I can receive my blessing. So one of the coolest part about it comes now because I am a crazy giver. I seriously always I'm trying to see what Holy Spirit is trying to tell me and who to give. I go to church. I take my tidings. I take my offerings and I take an extra check. And I said, you know what, Holy Spirit, who are we gonna bless today? Who is who is praying that needs an answer right now from you? But before this, I made a pact. When I didn't have nothing to eat as a single mom, I used to grab my two kids and we used to hold hands and pray and say, thank you, Lord, that in the midst of our circumstances, you are supplying because you are our provider. Because that's, the word, that's what the word says. He don't say don't come and whip. And then let me see if I can do it for you. He said, give thanks in everything and for everything. So today is a time that you have to wake up and that you have to believe and start implementing what the word says. So now we go to Corinthians 13, 3. And it says, if you give all I possess, if, if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I might boast, but do not have love, I have gained nothing. So this is what the Lord is saying. When we give, we're not giving to receive something in return. We're giving out of love. We got to remember everything we do as leaders, as Christians, as believers, as followers of Jesus, we have to do it out of love. Why? God is love. So when you, when you give, you give because you love. You love the person, the time, uh, financial, whatever it is that you might want to invest on. It is made out of love. Why? Because God is love. So you're not thinking, well, I'm going to give this to the sister. Maybe she will put me on her show. Maybe I'm going to give this to my brother because, it, you know, maybe he'll give me a right somewhere. No, it is you're giving out of love. You don't look for nothing in return. That's why, you know, when I give, when I 
and even to people that I don't know out of these countries or whatever it is that I'm giving to, I always say from God, leave notes, messages, whatever it is, from God. I don't want them to come and bless me as well because no one can bless me as my father can do in heaven. So I'm okay. They can say thank you. They can say whatever. I, I, I'm just doing a job for Jesus. I'm just storing his money where he can be glorified because it's all about him and today we have to wake up and we have to get into the word because faith com comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God so then we're going to go into Acts 20 um, 35 and it says in everything I did this is Jesus talking he said I show you that by this kind of hard work we must help the weak Remembering the words of the Lord of Jesus himself is more blessed, blessed to give than to receive. I have a problem with receiving from other people. I don't have a problem receiving from my father. He pampers me. He gives me everything that I need, you know, but I actually love giving. And, it's, and even um, in the natural world, because many Christians are living in the natural world, we have to remember that we're not from this world. So we should be living the supernatural. And what do I mean by this? It means that I don't do what others do. I don't do what this world tells me. But it's so crazy that even in the natural world, we call it karma. What goes around comes around, meaning what you saw is what you're going to rip. And that's what God is trying to tell us here. And so we're going to listen to a beautiful song right now. And then we're going to come back and we're going to continue with this powerful message.
Welcome back. So we were talking about giving and receiving, and we actually finish in the book of um, Acts, and it says it's better to give than to receive. The other day I was listening to this um, powerful preacher. His name is Bill Johnson, and he was talking about, I think it's Proverbs 64 or 67, and I'm giving you the keys to the success of opening the doors of heaven so your provision we never stop. It's going to come. And at the end of the, the show, so you have a friend, somebody, just tell them to tune in because we're live. And I just want you to know that there, there is a God and that He wants to provide for us. So going back into uh, Proverbs 60, I think it's 67, when it says, first we have to repent, meaning transform our mind, not trying to keep ourselves um, and living in the same life, then we have to have faith. It's having the confidence. And then we have to receive the gift. What is the, our, our greatest gift? It's Jesus. We can have anything. All things are possible through Jesus. So, and then on Proverbs 67, he said, Oh, Lord, bless me. Oh, Lord, bless me. So, he's teaching us to ask God to bless us. I remember that in 2014, December 27, I was on my knees with $20, got fired from my job, and I said, oh, Lord, bless me. I have seen how much need is needed in this world, and if you will bless me, I will make sure people glorify you, that you get glorified, because I'm going to sow into your kingdom, because I'm going to help the needy, because I'm going to answer prayers. Not me, but you through me. Use me, O oh Lord. I make this back with you, that my prosperity will be with a purpose. So sisters and brothers, it's time to wake up, and it's time to proclaim what's ours. So then after we repent, we have faith, we receive the gift, then we ask them to bless us, to give us more than enough so we can help all this in need. I have a family member that once told me, I don't like asking God for anything because I have enough for me. And I said, sister, that is very selfish. So what about if your mom comes and she has a need? You're not going to have enough for her, only for yourself. So we always have and pray boldly. You have to be bold when you come into the presence of God. You have to wear your crown because that's how you get his attention. Because I know who my God is. I know who my Father is. So I know that I can have anything in his name and all good things come from God. And all I want to do is help the ones in need and that let them know there is a God and whatever happened to me can happen to them. So then we go to Proverbs, um, I'm sorry. Then now we're talking financially. Now Jesus and God, like seriously, it's so good that it's not only about giving financially, but listen to what Matthew 10 says. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you receive, freely give. So he's not only talking to us about giving financially. He's talking about give freedom to the captive. Give life to the dead. You know, bring heal, wholeness into a family. Drive out demons. This was given to you freely. So meaning as we received Jesus, it was given to us. So now we have to help all these in need. Then we have Psalms 112.5 and it says, Good will come to those who are generous and live freely who conduct their affairs with justice. Then James 1.5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. Ask for wisdom. Wisdom is the head of wealth. With wealth, with wisdom comes wealth. And we need wealth. We need wealth from kingdom, heaven, here on earth, to help our sisters, to help the weak, to help the needy. We need that help here, but it's up to us Christians, wake up. I am not the perfect person in the world, but I know this happened to me. 2015, January 3rd, I opened my business, and now it's 
it's overflowing. And I'm able, I'm able to help the kingdom of heaven here on earth because of that, because I was bold, because I received the gift, because I've repented by the transformation of my mind. And it's not easy, but I have to tell you that what has brought me here is that I engage into reading the Bible. Not how many pages I read, but meditating on it, making it my priority every morning. And if any business persons are out there listening right now, the best books that you can read is the Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. Every day, make that mandatory priority in your life, and you shall see how God is going to come and give you the wisdom to run the business and take it to the next level. There are sisters and brothers out there, not only families, but they need us. They need us. And then I have the best one of all. Luke 630. Give to everyone who asks of you. If anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it. I have somebody that had stolen from me before. I don't care. I'm not going to take nobody to court. I have the best judge ever, and his name is Jesus, and he's praying for me. He's interceding for me. So why would I put my efforts in something that is here from earth? He said, I have called you, Matthew 10 and 8, I have called you to heal the sick, to wake up the dead, to cast out demons, and these are earthly things, and you don't believe them. How can then I teach you the heavenly things? Brothers and sisters, I'm after the heavenly things. It's time for us Christians to rise up. So today, I want to close, close with a prayer. And I just want you to receive and proclaim every gift that our Father has given us. And I want you to be bold. So let's close our eyes. First, say, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great things that you have in store for us. And we proclaim every blessing that our Papa Abraham and Jesus have released for us. And we just proclaim it, we just receive it in the name of Jesus. And if you have never accepted Jesus in your life, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I repent of my sins. I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. That's step number one. Everything that is from Jesus, it's free. It's not going to cost you anything but your time to read the Bible. So I encourage you tonight, read the Bible, engage on it, make it your priority. Fight it and just implement it. Implement it. Don't forget about that. Implement it. Put it. Practice it. And you shall see the doors of heaven open with that provision that God has in store for you. I thank you for your time and be blessed. OCN, Word of God to the world.